Okay, Daniel, this one's for you. You know who you are. Let's talk about anxiety because it's probably never been higher, has it, uh, amongst the world now. And I think one of the things that certainly I've accepted, and by the way, acceptance is the key word here. One of the things that I've accepted is that at some point I will feel it, obviously, um, at some point a trigger, and I'll come to that point in a second, could cause me to feel panic, stress, etc. all those other negative psychological conditions. Now, what I now have are tools that I can turn to when I feel those sensations. But it's important, I think, for people to realize that there is no one thing that will absolutely 100% hands down keep those experiences at bay, those sensations, those negative feelings. So really the answer that I've discovered is it's about creating a way of living that optimizes your mind, your body, in order to stave off, to prevent those experiences from happening as much as possible. So what that means is, Soma breath for me every morning is, is amazing. I still get huge benefits from it, as I do the Wim Hof method, which I do as well. Throughout the day, there will be times when I adopt a more conscious breathing style. And that will also mean longer exhales to kickstart the parasympathetic response. The parasympathetic response or the parasympathetic nervous system is the part of your autonomic nervous system that is linked to the feeling of calm, digestion, and ease. Now I should add something here. Last year, because of some family difficulties, let's say, there were at least two occasions in which I experienced a panic attack. And in that situation, I hurriedly went through my list of uh, processes, practices, in order to stem that panic attack. Most of them didn't work. The only thing that absolutely worked was me going outside, turning on the hose, and dousing myself in cold water. I needed that shock, my physiology needed that shock, that stress, to stem the negative neurochemicals that were flowing at that point. So let's say you're at work. Obviously, if the only tool you have to stem that panic attack is a cold shower, you might not be able to make use of that practice. So we now need to look at, therefore, a way of living, a protocol, a new way, a new routine perhaps, a new way of moving through your life that will dramatically reduce the likelihood of you ever experiencing that panic attack. So lastly, let's just talk about where these things come from. A panic attack is derived from a trigger, something that you've created in your brain, a template, that when in a given situation, it causes a fight-flight reaction. Now, a lot of therapists will often want to dive deep into where that comes from. I personally don't think there's any point. Why, why do you need to delve into your history to figure this out? I mean, to give you an idea, um, I did have a particular trigger to do with money. So whenever I was in dire straits from a monetary perspective, and I've been in that situation many times, quite often I would then experience a severe psychological negative reaction to it. And I was unable to think rationally about my situation because that trigger of not having any money or being in the poo had caused my my rational brain, my uh, intelligent brain to, to shut down and the fight flight part of the brain, the amygdala, to take over. The problem with that bit of the brain is that it's not particularly useful 
it's only useful if you're running away from uh, from danger. So in my opinion, you don't, you, you don't need to know where this thing comes from, but what, what's really useful and what I've found is to go about your life in a different fashion in order, especially right now, given the current situation, let's talk about acceptance, the point that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. We have to, for example, accept that this pandemic is here and it's certainly here to stay for the foreseeable future. There are no real solutions to getting rid of it. So let's just accept it and move on. And in the same way, we should accept the fact that we will have negative psychological conditions. Everybody will. However, you accept it, but then you build into your life a number of practices that you can carry out through the, throughout the day in order to dramatically reduce the likelihood of you experiencing those feelings, sensations again. So going back to my routine, what works for me, and it's not 100% foolproof, is the morning routine, the five Tibetan rites, the Soma breath breathing routine. And I'll drop a link for that below if you want. Um, occasionally the Wim Hof breathing uh, method. Um, I'm also looking at various different new practices that optimize your body in order to encourage more experiences of a flow state, for example. I also use binaural beats, which are really useful to use. I use them regularly to encourage uh, focus. So what they do is create a, uh, they trick your brain into creating a brainwave pattern. Uh, I won't, I've done videos on this before, so I won't go into detail, but they're really useful for, for hacking the brain. Let's say you want to be focused, uh, then you stick a certain binaural beat on and you will be. Uh, let's say you want to feel calm, you stick a binaural beat on uh, and you will feel much better. One of the things Soma Breath have in the background is something similar, something called isochronic tones. Um, they have those running in the background whilst you practice your breathing. So those are really useful tools. And as I said before, conscious breathing is really useful. So throughout the day, I might, um, let's say I feel overwhelmed. Let's say my mind is rushing all over the place. Then at some point I will either take a chore, slow it down. So let's say it's washing up. I will take that activity slow it down. I will become aware, much more aware of my senses. So the feeling of the water on my hands, the sound of the water hitting the cutlery or the plates. Whilst at the same time, I will slow down my breathing, all the while extending the exhale through pursed lips. So, Keep slowing it down. This is very much a Buteco method. I've done a video on this before. Uh, to the point where you're breathing far less and in a much more controlled fashion. In fact, slowing it down is quite key. It's about adopting a new personality, really. And that personality is one in which you go about your life with ease. We quite often fall into the trap, don't we, of rushing through life, thinking that we have very little time. And I suspect for most people, you can slow it down. That's the key, isn't it? slowing down everything in your life in order to feel ease. And this is where the adoption of a new personality is key. And it comes with practice. So it's not easy. And I'm not saying I have it 100% figured out, of course. But the more you slow everything down, the easier it is to handle life's ups and downs. The easier it is to come up with practical solutions. The easier it is 
to act in a rational to act in a rational way. Hey Winston, don't you think? And of course, the more time you spend in nature, the easier life becomes. The easier it is to hone in on your senses, to hone in on touch, feel, sight, sound. And I would say actually, again, we, we quite often lose that connection, don't we, with our senses, especially if you live in the city, especially if you feel as if your life is rush, rush. And actually, I think the more mindful you become of all of your senses, your auditory, kinesthetic, etc., Again, the easier life becomes, and this is the key to it all, isn't it? Ease. Evolution of Dave signing off. Thank you for watching.